ones for down there. You still a thing? Hey, happy Friday, everyone. Hope your day is going just fantastic so far. It's a good one for me. It's about to be for you, too. You're watching the Bible vlog, and this is Romans chapter 4. All right, so in chapter 4, Paul is taking us back to the Old Testament for a look at the life of Abraham. Now, the overall point that he makes is fascinating because he shows that salvation by faith and not works is clearly taught in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Also keep in mind that the people that Paul is writing to in Rome have nothing but the highest regard for Abraham as they consider him a father of their faith. All right, so look at verses 1 through 3. What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before. For God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now we find this example all throughout the Bible. God is always looking for people who will simply believe him. We see the same thing demonstrated in the life of Jesus. He was always acknowledging people's faith or asking them if he believed that he was able to do something. It's the same reason why the Bible says in Hebrews that without faith it is impossible to please God. Understand this, no amount of good works is any substitute for faith. Think about it this way. If we try try really, really hard by our own efforts, then we can actually make ourselves have love or joy or patience or courage or mercy or any of these other attributes. But faith happens when we stop trying to do something by our own efforts and we trust someone else to do it for us. Faith is the one attitude that is exactly opposite of trusting ourselves. This is the reason why God decided that faith would be the attitude of the heart by which we receive salvation. You see, in this way, it's an entirely free gift from God that is not dependent on us. All right, still looking at Abraham, skip over to verses 9 through 11. As you all should know by now, no chapter written by Paul should go by without mentioning circumcision. What pray tell, sir, is a circumcision? Oh, it's the latest rage. I put it into this little hole here and nip the tip. Does this blessedness then come upon the circumcised only, or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was accounted to Abraham for righteousness. How then was it accounted? While he was circumcised or uncircumcised? Not while circumcised, but while uncircumcised. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had while still uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believe, though they are uncircumcised, that righteousness might be imputed to them also. That's a lot of circumcision happening there. All right, so what is Paul saying here? That Abraham is also considered a father of the faith to anyone who believes. Now, this would have been a shock for first century Jews, but Paul is showing them from the scriptures that works isn't what matters, but it's faith in God. Okay, so look at one more section. Go to verses 17 through 22. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him who he believed God, who gives life to the dead and call those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope in hope believe so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be and now listen to how it describes Abraham and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness you know I love how it describes God in verse 17 that he calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Think about creation. Think about miracles, healing, all of the incredible, wonderful works of God, and they always operate in this way. When you understand the character of God like this and you yield to it in the way that Abraham did, that is where you see the power of God at work in your life. God promised Abraham a son, and even though he's a hundred years old, even though he's well past an age that anybody should be having children, he knows that God is able to do what he has promised. Look at verse 21 again. Being fully convinced what he had promised he was able to perform. Guys, today God is still looking for people to trust him. If you will take his promises in the word, stand on them, believe them, and trust that God is capable of doing what he says, you will always, always see the power of God moving in your life. Boys and girls, that is going to wrap it for us this week with the book of Romans. I love going through this book. It's actually been a while since I've personally read this one, so I'm enjoying every minute of it. Hope you are too. All right, come back on Monday for chapter five. Hope you all have an amazing weekend, and thank you as always for joining us. God bless you guys. We will see you back here Monday.